So I'm calling this little piece the an opening in the clouds. And I want to share something that happened a couple of days ago. I had a, a moment in which I saw something very different from what I've been seeing for years. But first, I want to tell you a little story about something that happened to me back in the early years of the 2000s, because there's a related principle that I think we need to keep in mind. Um, so you should know that I have uh, had a history of serious problems with an ovarian cyst. For reasons that I didn't know or understand at the time, the cyst would occasionally swell up and then either leak or burst, causing serious pain or infection. I, I had been laid up a number of times and even been hospitalized at least twice for this. And I had learned to pay close attention to signs that the ovary was in trouble again. So this particular day was in late February or early March. Um, and I was on my way to a meeting that was quite some distance from home, a couple hours away, when suddenly I didn't feel good at all. I drove for maybe another half hour. And, and then I realized that the signs and the symptoms were warning me of an episode with that ovary. At that point, I turned around, I drove directly to the grocery store where I bought oranges, lemons, and grapefruit in the quantities needed to do a detox procedure called the purge. Then I drove home and started the procedure immediately. The purge is an extremely powerful detox that immediately alkalinizes the body and a bacterial infection cannot survive in a totally alkaline environment. And in the same way, a virus cannot survive in a totally acid environment. So anyway, I did the purge and then immediately started a 10 day water fast, just water, no food. Through all of this, which was about three days, the infection continued to get worse. I could barely move. The pain was awful. Um, my doctor was so concerned with, that he actually came to the house, examined me, and immediately made arrangements for me to go to the hospital for surgery. So through all of this, this three days, I kept asking for a sign <laughs> that I was going to be okay. A sign that I had started the alkalizing detox early enough to get ahead of the infection, but there was silence. Nothing was coming, no messages, no signs, no nothing. The result was that after the doctor left, I resigned myself to going to the hospital and letting them do whatever they needed to do. So I called my husband and then my daughter and I told them I was going to have emergency surgery and they each headed home. I took a shower, packed my suitcase, and with an hour still to wait, I sat down to read something, anything that would take my mind off the situation. I had been reading for a short time when I suddenly heard a distant voice. It was very, very faint, as if it was coming from behind and between the words I was reading. And it said, you, will be okay. Keep going with the fast. And there was the message I had been waiting for. It came to me after I had given up and resigned myself to the seriousness of the situation. If I hadn't had so much experience in watching and paying attention to what was going on in my consciousness, I probably would have missed the message altogether. But I heard it, I recognized it, and I realized I had caught the problem just in time. The infection had not been able to get ahead of the power of the purge. My relief was immense. And when my husband and daughter came home, I very calmly said, I got a message. I'm, I'm gonna be okay. I'm not going to the hospital. 
I'm going to continue the fast. Oh my, they were very upset. There was quite a bit of pressure on me to change my mind and we all knew it was a life or death situation. However, in the end, they accepted my decision. It took months for me to heal completely. Like till August, this was February or March. But it, it really didn't take all that much longer than it would have taken if I had gone and had surgery. I had to do quite a bit of research regarding what else I needed to do to heal and support that ovary because getting past the crisis was not the goal. The goal was I didn't want this problem to recur ever again. And I had to change my life in order to get that outcome. So that's the end of that little story, but, I, but keep it in mind as I share the following. So on Monday of this week, I was cleaning house and vacuuming, scrubbing bathrooms and doing laundry. And I hadn't even opened my computer because I just needed a break from everything. As I worked, I was absolutely churning inside about everything going on in the world around me. It was all too much, too much drama, too much emotion. Every moment of every day, more stuff about Trump, the elections, the financial system, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, China, the coronavirus, the masks, the vaccines, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, riots, ballots, with never anything different. No relief. The question I was asking was why? Why the relentless barrage? What was really going on here? So the whole thing was just like the mainstream media reporting on Trump. When you never see or hear a single positive story or report on somebody, you know something's up. And when you never hear a single report on something besides the political situation, you know something's up. There's a hidden agenda somewhere. Why were we never hearing or seeing a single other topic of news except the relentless drama going on in our government or our financial system or the medical system and the schools and education system closing our country. You know, what about the rest of the world? That didn't just disappear. My frustration with the whole situation just came to a fever pitch. And finally, I sat down on the sofa, half angry at what was happening and half ready to cry. I had the thought, it's too much. It's the same crap over and over. And as I sat there ready to explode, I had this picture of myself just marching up to this big curtain, pulling it back roughly and demanding to know what is going on behind the curtain. Only to be confronted with utter silence and a big white wall. Now, a couple of times in the past, I've talked about seeing the white wall and what it signifies. It's my signal for stop, don't go any further. There's a lesson here and you don't wanna ruin the lesson. However, there was a dot of light on the wall that I'd never seen before. It caught my attention. And I sort of fixated on that dot wondering what it was. As I did, it began to expand and emit this intense golden light that spread out and then opened into a small brief vision of our world. It was a very different world from what I had been seeing these past years. It was a vision of our world that was above all, beautiful and peaceful. We, the people, were busy, we were cooperating, we were regenerating ourselves and the planet. There was a general sense of calm, yet there was this electricity that was mostly an excitement about the future. So my instant gut level response was, oh my God, we have a chance. We, there's an opening and we don't have to descend into chaos and destruction. And then the whole thing closed. 
I got up and went back to cleaning house, but I couldn't get over the fact that I'd just seen something so encouraging for the first time in I don't know how long. Could I trust what I just saw? Was it possible that this was all gonna end very well? That little vision was like a break in the clouds that gives a pilot just enough view to let him know where he is and where he can land safely. Then the telephone rang and it was someone from Washington DC that keeps me up to date about what's going on behind the scenes. Essentially the message was, don't get too tangled up in what you see going on because it's all theater. It's gonna play out over the next two or three months. And I said, so what are we gonna have? What are we gonna see? What's gonna play out to be? And the answer was, we're gonna have a world without war. So my initial reaction was something like, that's it? No war? As if that was inconsequential or irrelevant. But after the call was over, I had a chance to think about it. And that's when the enormity of what was happening behind the scenes sunk in. How was it that I had a vision of a beautiful, peaceful, golden world and the phone should ring to say that we should not get caught up in the theatrics because they were designed to distract us while those behind the curtain were working to create a world without war. The timing here was too much of a coincidence to be dismissed. I've had many visions over the years about what was happening in our world and they consistently revealed chaotic, discouraging and downright frightening events. Many of these visions started with the awakening of consciousness in 1979, and they were added to by the robes over 1980 and 81. And then since then, other visions warned about the new world order, about socialism, maybe fascism, or even communism. In addition, to those visions, there were actual leaks about being dragged into more wars, constant wars, reports about efforts to collapse nations and create an open society without borders, plans to reduce the population dramatically, that's us, and threats around our financial system, our pensions and many other issues. When I would hear this stuff or see these visions, questions would come up over and over. Is it too late? Are we too far gone to recover? Are we gonna give up and walk a path that seems inevitable or stay open and hold our ground? Did we start the process of waking up soon enough? The vision of the calm, peaceful, regenerating world here on our planet at the 11th hour is like the tiny little message that came in at the last moment of my crisis with peritonitis. It sent a message that indicated something good was there if we just keep going. It was something that said, hey, there's an opening for change that wasn't showing itself last year or last month or even last week. Like the message that came to me at the moment of crisis with the infection, this message is coming to us at a moment of crisis in our struggle to maintain our power. We are in a life and death fight. What are we fighting for? Well, some are fighting for an end to the morbid financial obesity of the 1%. Uh, some want to end the endless wars. Others want to stop the rape of the planet and the destruction of our air, our water, and our soil. Still others want to stop the disappearance of children or the slave trades or all those human rights atrocities that go on in the background. And all of these are really worthy causes, but the real reason we're fighting is because we need to move into our power or give it up and hand it over to someone else. There's been talk for years about the shift. 
And we are at that point right now. The shift is a shift in consciousness. It's a change in the way we structure our consciousness, the way we use our perception, the way we design our support systems, that's our government, our finance, our food, everything, and live our lives. In the same way that I had to live differently in order to heal peritonitis without the catastrophic invasion of surgery, we will have to live a little differently in order to shift into our power. At a recent Tea and Consciousness, I mentioned that this year is the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower Compact. In 1620, it's exactly 400 years ago, a few people drew up the Mayflower Compact and declared that they no longer needed kings or popes or presidents or other strong men to real, rule them because they were going to rule themselves. This was unheard of at that time. It was a massive experiment. Over the four centuries since then, there have been a few iterations of how that self-governance has worked and new choices have had to be made. Keep going, give up. So here we are again. The decision to govern ourselves is a decision to step into power. In the long journey I've made over the years, one of the best teachers I've had was Don Juan of Carlos Castaneda fame. I won't go into the details, but one of his core teachings is that the goal is to step into your power, to see the world through new eyes, and to use that power the best way you can at the moment you need to. He taught that there are four enemies to the development of power, and those four are fear, clarity, power itself, and old age. If you notice, power, the very thing each one of us wants and needs, can become an enemy if you never learn to handle it well. And to handle it well, you really have to keep all things in check at all times. Says Don Juan, the power you have is not really yours. It is only yours to use wisely and well. We have a government that has championed freedom and rights and responsibilities of the human being for a good part of the last 400 years. It's based on ethical premises and has been carefully added to as we grew and understood ourselves a little better. Our quote, constitution literally symbolizes our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual makeup, our energetic constitution, and it's a good base. Our government also has a system of checks and balances that are designed to keep power in check because power out of control only destroys. Reckless power wrecks you and everything around you. And this is exactly what Don Juan teaches. And it's exactly the test that we're currently having. Are we gonna own our own power and keep all things balanced and in check? Or are we going back to being under somebody's thumb, back into slavery? We've been having quite the test over the past four years. We've been playing catch up because the naughty boys had a head start of 50 years. Things have looked pretty dire for a long time. But the little vision of this past Monday says that all is not lost. Like the message that came to me in the throes of peritonitis, it says, you'll be okay, keep going. That white wall symbolizes a big lesson, a big test, a big understanding. Let's learn it and work together to regenerate our world. There is hope and the future may be much brighter than we were expecting. Thank you.